okay so today's lecture is, lesson is going to be on the barometer so on the left you can see this figure is of a basic barometer okay so what is the barometer so atmospheric pressure is measured by a device called a barometer thus the atmospheric pressure is often re referred to as the barometric pressure the italian evangelista torricelli was the first to conclusively prove that the atmospheric pressure can be measured by inverting mercury filled tube into a mercury container that is open to the atmosphere as shown here so in this diagram they put mercury in this tube here and what happens is this tube is filled with mercury and gravity pulls down this mercury and since water seeks its own level it will it will uh, come downwards leaving a vacuum here now there will be few or no particles of mercury whenever there's few particles of mercury it would be considered as a gas and here it is given as a vacuum so what happens is the pressure of the atmosphere acts downwards onto the surface of this mercury which is open to the atmosphere and and because it pushed that pressure of the due to atmosphere pushes it down the mercury moves up the tube and this is in equilibrium so here you have the uh, pressure due to atmosphere they have resolved because uh, pressure due to atmosphere is acting downwards that would be the same as the one acting upwards here for this tube and the weight of this mercury in this tube will be acting at the centroid and it will be acting downwards okay and the height is given from the point c to the point b that's the height so the pressure at point b is equal to the atmospheric pressure and the pressure at point c can be taken to be zero since there is only mercury vapor about point c and the pressure is very low relative to atmospheric pressure and can be neglected to an excellent approximation writing a force balanced in the vertical direction gives pressure due to the atmosphere equals to rho gh now from the previous video i have talked about the variation of pressure with depth and from that formula the the change in pressure is equal to minus rho g z now height can be taken as negative z so therefore the atmosphere is rho g h and here the weight acting downwards if you are resolving downwards is going to be rho g h the uh, uh, rho g h which is the pressure so you, the formula for pressure is the formula for pressure is force by area and you know that the force the force acting downwards if you resolve it is going to be weight so weight by area is the pressure and the weight is simply going to be the pressure times the area and we know that the pressure is rho gh from here so substituting in the formula you get weight equals to rho gh times a Now I have written the formula here. So uh, rho represents the density of mercury. G is the local gravitational acceleration, and h is the height of the mercury column above the free surface. Note that the length and the cross-sectional area of the tube have no effect on the height of the fluid column of a barometer. So here a one is given as uh, 
the has a greater cross sectional area so if you look here for a1 it the cross sectional area is greater as you can see the diameter of the tube is greater so what it is saying is that this uh, the horizontal component will not have an effect on the vertical component and how about the length okay so the one that the one on the right extreme right a3 this has the lowest uh, cross sectional area so that does not affect the uh, vertical component but how about if you increase the length of the tube so if you increase the length of the tube what's going to happen is that the forces is going to balance out and you can see the height over here the height remains the same level so what happens is it balances out and the height remains at the same level and you know that gravity is a constant the density of mercury is constant and the height will remain the same level here from when you compare it to the other diagram okay so also another point is that the length and the cross sectional area of the tube have no effect on the height of the fluid column of a barometer provided that the tube diameter is large enough to avoid surface tension capillary effects so this diameter has to be large enough to avoid surface tension capillary effects otherwise it might affect the height a frequently used pressure unit is the standard atmosphere which is defined as the pressure produ produced by the column of mercury 760 millimeters in height at 0 degrees. The density of mercury is 13,595 kilograms per meter cube. Under standard gravitational acceleration, G is 9.807 meters per second squared. So what this, does this mean is that you are going to substitute this value for the value for gravity as 9.807 into this formula and the value of density as 13,595 into rho. So if water is used instead of mercury to measure the standard atmospheric pressure, a water column of about 10.3 meters would be needed. Now if we think about this, 10.3 meters is, is much more taller than uh, a building. It would be at least three flows high so that's not practical and we cannot construct such a large thing so mercury because mercury is has a higher density than water it would be better to use mercury okay so pressure is sometimes expressed especially by weather forecasters in terms of the height of the mercury column. The standard atmospheric pressure, for example, is 760 millimeters uh, mercury. So what does this mean is that it's 760 millimeters taken from here, 760 millimeters in height, and it's, it's HG because it, they're measuring that at zero degrees. So the unit mmHg is also called a tor in honor of Tori Selye. So it comes from Tor here. Therefore, one atmosphere is 760 Tor and one Tor is 133.3 Pascals. Atmospheric pressure of the atmosphere changed from 101.325 kilopascals at sea level to 89.88 and etc. at altitudes of 1000, 2000, 5000 etc. meters respectively. The typical atmospheric pressure in Denver is 1610 meters. So remember that the atmospheric pressure at a location is simply the weight of the air above that location per unit surface area. 
So remember pressure is force divided by area and you're using weight as the force and you're using surface area as the area and pressure will be the atmospheric pressure. Therefore it changes not only with elevation but also with weather conditions. So the higher you go, you will have uh, a stage here. The decline of atmospheric pressure with elevation has reached as far reaching ramifications in daily life. So what does this mean? As you go higher, the atmospheric pressure gets uh, le less in magnitude or it gets smaller. Okay, so in daily life, cooking takes longer at high altitudes since water boils at a lower temperature. So what happens is when you go higher, there's going to be uh, less pressure. And when you increase the pressure, it compensates for the temperature, so it will cook faster. But if you go higher and it's low, low temp, uh, low pressure is there, then <clears throat> uh, cooking will take longer because the temperature won't uh, be sufficient to heat up the water at a lower pressure. Nose bleeding is a common experience at high altitudes since the difference between blood pressure and atmospheric pressure is large in this case. The delicate walls of the veins in the nose are often unable to withstand this extra stress. Variation of pressure with depth continued. Okay, so if we take this figure here, if we take the above point to be the free surface of a liquid open to the atmosphere, where the pressure is the atmospheric pressure, so it's given here above is atmospheric pressure then the pressure at the depth h below becomes below the free surface becomes that okay so pressure below is the atmospheric pressure plus rho g h okay or uh, rho g h can be written as the gauge pressure So this pressure, so if you resolve, if you resolve uh, vertically, you're going to get P below is equal to P above plus rho g h. Now rho g h is going to represent the, atma, the pressure which acts downwards. Okay, since it piles upon itself. Due to here. The pressure in a liquid at rest increases linearly with distance from the free surface. So what does that mean is, if you start from here and as you keep on going deeper, you are increasing the height. So when you are increasing the height, you are increasing the distance. As you increase the distance, the fluid on top stacks on more weight and therefore the pressure at the bottom will be greater than the pressure at the top since there is a greater weight acting per unit area with a greater height so dp by dz so dz would be the height so the change in pressure by the change in height is minus rho g now remember the formula is minus rho g z okay so h is minus z, so dp by dz will be minus rho g z. And this is taking, this is differentiating. So if you multiply, uh, if you take dz and multiply it up, you're going to get dp is minus rho g times dz. And what does dp means? The change in pressure, which, uh, which you can represent by delta p. The change in pressure would be, P2 minus P1. Okay. So that's integrating between 2 and 1. 
and and remember from this formula it has a minus here so minus you take out and integrate between 2 and 1 rho g dz and that will give you the change in pressure so this is how you arrive at the formula which we had derived for pressure with depth so what's the difference between absolute pressure gauge pressure and vacuum pressure so the actual pressure at a given position is called the absolute pressure and it is measured relative to absolute vacuum i.e. absolute zero pressure so you can see here p abs represent p absolute so the absolute pressure is the actual pressure at the given position so this is the given position from from here from the from the bottom to the top okay so that total represents the absolute pressure and is measured relative to absolute vacuum so the vacuum the vacuum is from here to here so when you are considering the absolute pressure it's measured relative to this um, vacuum in regards to the vacuum most pressure measuring devices however are calibrated to read zero in the atmosphere and so they integrate the difference between the absolute pressure and the local atmospheric pressure so when you uh, put absolute pressure is zero sorry when you read atmospheric pressure is zero that's given by this formula here atmospheric pressure the difference between atmos difference between absolute and the local atmospheric pressure so you can see here you're subtracting the uh, absolute pressure from atmospheric pressure Absol you're subtracting this this absolute pressure from atmospheric pressure here and you're going to get the vacuum. Okay, given that the atmospheric pressure is it. Difference called a gauge. Okay. So the, the difference is called a gauge pressure. So it's given here. The gauge pressure is the difference between the absolute pressure and the atmospheric pressure. The P abs is the absolute and P ATM is the atmospheric pressure. The absolute and the atmospheric. Okay. So what it is saying is that The difference between the absolute and the atmospheric pressure is going to give me the gauge pressure. 
this is here so you can clearly see from this diagram if i subtract this longer length from this shorter length i will get this gauge pressure which is in green okay so that is this formula here and the gauge pressure can be positive or negative because pressures below atmospheric pressures are sometimes called vacuum pressures and are measured by vacuum gauges that indicate the difference between the atmospheric and the absolute pressure so what happens is this gauge pressure if it's negative it would be in this direction and when this gauge pressure is in the opposite direction it is called the vacuum uh, vacuum pressure okay and now you can say that uh, p atmosphere minus p absolute okay So you can see the difference between P atmosphere here and the absolute pressure here will give me the vacuum pressure. Okay. This is wrong here. Okay. Okay, so this is an example of gravity driven flow using pressure diagram and variation of pressure with depth. So from this figure on the left is for gravity driven IV bottle used to deliver oxygenated blood to a patient at a medical hospital. So here hanging 1.2 meters above is the IV bottle and due to the force of gravity he's going. this patient is going to be supplied with oxygenated blood at a constant rate okay so intravenous infusions usually are driven by gravity by hanging the fluid bottle at sufficient height to counteract the blood pressure in the vein and to force the fluid into the body the higher the bottle is raised the higher the flow rate of the fluid will be it is observed that the fluid and the blood pressures balance each other when the bottle is 1.2 meters above the arm level determine the gauge pressure of the blood if the gauge pressure of the fluid of the arm needs to be 20 kilopascals or sufficient flow rate determine how high the bottle must be placed take the density of the fluid to be 1000 to 1020 kilograms per meter cubed so it is given that an IV fluid and the blood pressure balance each other when the bottle is at a certain height the gauge pressure of the blood and the elevation of the bottle required to maintain flow at the desired rate are to be determined. So you are going to assume that the IV fluid is incompressible. So you can approximate this fluid to water and water is incompressible. So this IV fluid would be incompressible. The IV bottle is open to the atmosphere. So this IV bottle, you are going to assume that here is going to be open to the atmosphere. So the density of the IV fluid is given in the question to be 1020 kilograms per meter cube. Noting that the IV fluid and the blood pressures balance each other when the bottle is 1.2 meters above the arm level, the gauge pressure of the blood is simply equal to the gauge pressure of the IV fluid at a depth of 1.2 meters. So, absolute, so you're going to use the formula absolute minus atmosphere so you want the gauge pressure so you're going to use, so you're going to use this gauge pressure formula absolute minus atmosphere so you're going to take the absolute pressure as the arm 
and the atmospheric pressure is the bottle so if i draw a bottle here So the atmospheric pressure will be acting along this line here and the absolute pressure will be acting here okay and the difference between the absolute pressure and the atmospheric pressure is going to give me the gauge pressure so you're going to do rho gh now you're going to use 1020 and the density times the value of gravity which is 9.81 times the height which is 1.2 meters and you're going to get 12 kilopascals to provide a gauge pressure of 20 kilopascals at the arm level the height of the sur surface of the IV fluid in the bottle from the arm level is again to be determined from the gauge pressure rho gh arm to bottle to be so you're going to take this formula and rearrange for the height so P gauge divided by rho g. So you're going to take the gauge pressure as 20 kilopascals. Okay, in the previous question you had worked out as 12 kilopascals, but here you're going to they give you the value of 20 and you're going to work out for the height. In the previous question, they had given you the height, but this question you're going to work out the height given a uh, different gauge pressure. So you're going to do 20 divided by 1002 uh, 1020 times 9.81 to get 2 meters. Note that the height of the reservoir can be used to control flow rates in gravity driven flows. When there is flow, the pressure drop in the tube due to frictional effects should also be considered. So what happens is when you have a tube, the fluid flows along the side of the tube and there is one in the center. So usually the one in the center flows at a faster rate and this one at the side flows at a less uh, uh, at a slower rate because of the contact between the surface and that's uh, uh, the pr that's due to friction and that results in a pressure drop in the tube okay it, so for a specified flow rate this requires raising the bottle to a little higher to overcome the pressure drop so there was this guy called robert mayer and he was a doctor in a ship in the East Indies and from physiological observations he believed in the pr principle of conservation of energy. He derived theoretically the mechanical heat equivalent based on the calorimetric data of Joseph Black of Glasgow University. He had tried to publish his paper but remained unsuccessful for a long time. Okay, so, his, so this is what happened to him. Okay. The mayor argued that an amount of gas needs to be heated more at a constant pressure than at a constant volume. So what it says here is that it needs to be heated at more at a constant pressure than at a constant volume. So let's take the constant pressure to be Cp and let's and it says here than. So whenever they say than, that means it's uh, subtract and it says here constant volume is going to be cv okay because at constant pressure it is free to dilate and do work against the atmosphere so when it is at a constant pressure what happens is that the gas will dilate and do work against the atmosphere okay so that work is going to be I remember when you have a uh, pressure volume diagram okay whatever it's suppose it's like a straight line then the work is simply going to be p times v okay now here the the pressure is going to be the atmospheric pressure it is given here as atmospheric pressure times the delta v 
okay so you're going to change the increments of v so that's why it's going to be delta v okay and because it is an amount you're going to multiply it by the mass okay so mc minus mv and mcp minus mcv and it's delta t because it needs to be heated okay when it is needed to be heated so it's going to be the same temperature difference for both of them okay so using this tp and cv cp by cv constant we are, that were known in his time he estimated the left hand side of the equation in calorie while the right hand side was known in mechanical unit he thus established the numerical equivalence between these two units if the relation is uh, cv equals to rt okay so there's this formula cv comes from here and so what happens is the m and delta t so there's another formula which states that T is equal to T is equal to T V is equal to M R R T. So R is the real gas constant, T is the temperature, M is the mass. Okay. So what happens is that now you can see PV here, PV is the same as this here and okay so what is T, so you can see in this formula there is T here, so they have taken out a common of multiple of T and M they have taken out common multiple of M and R would simply be TP here, TP minus TV, RS TP minus TV, okay, and that's how you get this formula. Okay, so this is another uh, formula which is Q equals to U plus W, and this is the formula derivation. So the first law for a closed system undergoing a change of state. So the expression sum of work in a cycle equals to sum of heat in a cycle. So what happens is if there is like a cycle and then you have you have uh, one is work and one is heat. So what happens is that expression applies to systems undergoing a cycle. So this, this diagram shows a cycle it stops at one one state and goes to another state and it goes back so this from here to here is a process okay this is one process and this is another process and this is when it returns to the same process it is called a cycle okay the algebraic summation of all energy transfer across energy boundaries is zero but if a system undergoes a change of state during which both heat transfer and work transfer involved, the net energy change will be stored or accumulated within the system. So if Q is the amount of heat transfer to the system, so suppose you are taking water or any substance and you are boiling it or heating it up and W is the, work of, uh, is the amount of work transferred from the system during the process the net energy transfer q minus w will be stored in the system so what happens is the amount of work uh, transferred from so so the water transfers some amount of work to the surrounding and the remaining energy is stored within the water so that will be called the internal energy so energy in storage is neither heat nor work so it is not hot it doesn't become hot the temperature does not increase and it is not a work okay so it is called internal energy 
So the difference Q minus W is equal to delta E, where E is the internal energy. So, where, so you can write this formula as Q equals to delta E plus W. Or you can write it as Q equals to U plus W. Since you know that U is the internal energy. Now here, in an ideal gas, there are no intermolecular forces of attraction and repulsion and the internal energy depends only on temperature. So we have seen from before that the internal energy depends on the temperature because the temperature is used to heat it up. Okay, so U is a function of the temperature. For an ideal gas, other forms of energy which can be possessed by a system are magnetic energy, electrical energy, surface tension energy. So in the absence of these forms, the total energy of the system is given as E, E k means so the total energy, this is the total energy, is given as the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. Okay, so that is going to be the macro. Okay, and U is the internal energy and that is the micro. If you are considering one, uh, so if you look at the microscopic level and you uh, consider one molecule or one atom, okay, and at the macro level you are considering uh, like six point six times ten to the twenty three atoms, okay, or molecules, where E K E P and U refer to the kinetic potential and internal energy, okay, in the absence of gravity. So whenever there is no gravity, uh, Ep is going to be 0 since Ep is Ep is mgh and if, if uh, the gravity is 0, 0 multiplied by anything is 0, so Ep will be 0 and Ek will be 0 because it says the absence of motion. When there is no motion, the velocity is going to be 0, okay? Since the velocity is 0, anything multiplied by 0 is 0, so Ek will be 0. Therefore, E is going to be U, okay? So that equation becomes... Q equals to delta U plus W. Okay, so this is an example of specific gravity. So they have given you the specific gravity of a liquid is 0 0.8. So they want uh, to make calculations for the mass density, the specific volume and the specific weight. Okay, so specific gravity. What is specific gravity? Is the mass density of liquid divided by the mass density of water. So water would be the standard fluid, okay? And we want the liquid as the unknown, okay? So the liquid will be, so the uh, specific gravity or Sg is going to be 0 0.8, okay? And the de mass density of water is 1000 kilograms per meter cube. So 1000 multiplied by 0 0.8 will give you 800 kilograms per meter cube as the density of the liquid which you are trying to work out and the specific volume is 1 divided by rho okay so v is going to be now we know from the previous thing that the specific weight or gamma is weight by volume and a specific volume specific volume is V by W okay. And we know that weight is mass times gravity and we know that uh,
density is mass by volume Actually, that was wrong. So, just writing again. Density is mass by volume, and the volume is mass by density. Actually, my previous ex explanation was right. Weight is. I mean. Uh, Specific volume is specific volume is volume by weight and volume is simply volume and weight is as mass times gravity and we know that uh, density is mass by volume so mass is density times volume so volume divided by rho v g we cancel out the rho cancel out the v The specific volume is volume by mass not volume by weight okay so that's going to give me one by rho so i kept kept writing it wrong but eventually i got the answer so uh, specific volume is volume by mass okay so the volume is simply volume and mass is density times volume and these two volumes cancel out to get 1 divided by the density or 1 by rho so 1 by rho we have worked out the previous question the density is 800 so 1 by 800 is 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3 meter cube per kilogram and the specific weight is going to be we worked out we worked this out as uh, the specific weight is uh, rho g okay so density is 800 and gravity is 9.81 so you get 7848 newton per meter cubed okay so check out the specific weight video which i had done okay thank you for watching